Sensei, dead front right here. Obviously, over the last you know year or so, it's you know scheduled to fight opponents, and they, something's always happened. It was like Sean Brady, Nick Diaz, um, Ian Gary. Obviously, it got all the way to fight week before it didn't happen. So I just, cause how's the last couple of months been since it's been difficult? It feels like it's been a lot of start and stop for your your career. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely been uh, frustrating at points, but. You know, I was even talking about this not long ago. Uh, I think that these moments are what build us, builds us up, you know, what makes our character, uh, what builds our principles. And that's what I've, what I've been doing uh, through this period, just persevering, keep myself working, getting better, improving. And at some point, I know that I'm going to get a fight like I have one right now. I knew that this was going to happen. So instead of just focusing on, man, all these guys pull out, what's going on? I'm like, no, let me keep on working. The fight is going to come. I got to be ready for that. And that's, that's what I did. Obviously, after your first fight with Nick was delayed to December, and then obviously the video came out that everyone has seen. How early into, I guess, close to this fight did the UFC start to tell you, like, hey, we might not go with Nick anymore, and we might have to go with Tempa Garimbo? Uh, probably like, I think maybe a week after the video, something like that. So I'm not sure how long ago that is, but at that point, like, especially me and Ali, my manager, we were talking about it, you know, let's, without even the UFC saying anything, let's try to reach out to them and make sure that something's going on. So in, when I was supposed to fight in August and it didn't happen, you know, uh, the UFC wanted this fight. It was a big fight, and I said, okay, let's do it, but I want to fight this year. And, and then I told Ali, I'll be ready for anybody. So, so that's the thing, because I knew, like, maybe it's not going to happen. So I'll stay ready for, for whoever, you know, steps up, and great that Temba, you know, stepped up, and, and now we get a fight. Well, Temba actually said, you know, after his last win, he goes, I want to be ready just in case Vicente or Nick don't make it. So I guess, did you hear that? And when they presented you with his name, how much, how aware of you were you about his skills and everything? When he said that, I heard it right away that when he said it, and in my mind was like, okay, if something happens, there is somebody, you know, uh, there is somebody that is going to say yes. So in my mind, like, I knew that he could be an option, maybe even the, the you know, the, the, first option and that's what happened and obviously um you know he got really popular when the rock bought him a house and everything he's been on this tear good mix of subs good mix of decisions and knockouts so i guess what do you make of his skill set and just it's not the name of the same name as nick diaz and what it will lead to but just what do you think a win over temba garimbo does for you and what his skill set is i think it's a great fight uh nick you know all the hype big name a legend and obviously, I would love to have that under my belt. And I think that on, on, as a fan base, you know, the fan base would definitely engage with that. Now, if we're talking about a competitive fight, a uh, fight like for, in, a, in the sports side of it, I think that this is a great fight. Me and Temba. Temba is a uh, four-win streak. I'm not in my best moment, but I'm on the rankings. So he wants to jump up there. And I know how hungry he is. I've been in that position so many times. And I'm ready to show that I'm even hungrier to get to the top and to become a champion, which is my goal and has never stopped being my goal. He was in here and he, he said that, you know, I know I'm going to finish him. I just don't know when or how. So I guess how do you see this fight playing out on Saturday? Man, I, I, I am getting a finish. That's what I'm going for. I know that it's going to be uh, a wild fight. I know how hungry I am. I can imagine what, you know, what, what he wants to, the statement he wants to put, and let's go. Let's go. I'm ready for everything. And just last one for me. Can I get your thoughts on the co-main event between Shafkat and Ian? I think it's a great fight. You know, I've trained with both of them. Ian has been, like, I haven't trained with him more, like more than two years, I believe. And Shavkat, I've trained for this training camp. I, we were training sometimes together. I think Shavkat has the edge. I think he's the better grappler, better uh, wrestler. Better grappler, better wrestler. Striking, I'll give it to Ian. Ian is very talented, very skilled. But I just think, you know, like Shavkat's style, he could put the pressure and make it into a war. And I think that he thrives in wars. Vicente right here. Um, have you moved on from the possibility of the Nick Diaz fight ever happening? Do you still kind of hope or, or want it to happen, or are you okay at this point if it doesn't? 
At this point, I think like uh, I don't think it, it will happen again. Maybe who knows? But I'm looking up the division. You know, I'm looking up. I'm looking to get past Temba. That's the first you know mission to be accomplished. And after that, I'm looking up. So you know, I, I think that the Nick fight is 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 past. You're actually a small underdog against Temba. I don't know if you saw that. Um, does that surprise you, just given the fact that you're the veteran, you're the ranked fighter, you were top five at one point, you fought a lot of top top contenders, and he's the guy kind of coming up, uh, less proven than you. Um, does it surprise you to see you with the plus next to your name? I don't think it surprises me. Uh, I would say a lot of people are not ready you know, for what's coming. Maybe they think that I'm not the fighter I used to be. I can tell you I'm the best fighter I've ever been. So that's all I can say about that. Is this going to be kind of your own y'all must have forgot moment? For sure, definitely. What do you see your 2025 looking like? You know, you bounce back this weekend. What, is, what does 2025 have in store for you? 2025 is getting back to the top and chasing that title fight. You know, uh, right now we have... Bilal Muhammad, which I fought two times, we're one and one as a champion. If he remains champion, you know, I'm going to get that back to that top, and then we're going to have that trilogy. Do you have that sort of, uh, do you have an idea of what getting back to a title fight looks like, how many fights it might take? Do you kind of have a laser vision kind of of what that might be? Not really. I don't have, like, I don't know the fights after this one. My focus is this fight, and... And man, you know, I gotta focus on this. I got a, I got a big fight to have this Saturday, and, and that's where I am. Vicente, your close training partner and friend, Gilbert Burns, he's been killing it with this podcast. You're someone that knows him better than anyone. What's the funniest Gilbert Burns story you got? I don't know, Gilbert is here somewhere. Right there, look, he's back there. Funniest, ah man, I don't know. There are many funny stories. I would say like, let me think. Someone, some, a story that I can tell. <laughs> I don't know, just, just in general, like training has always been very fun and whenever, like I've been, I've gotten so many times trained in Florida when I lived in Brazil and we would hang out on his house, like I would stay on his house and, and he would go, uh, to Brasilia, where I used to live, and he would li stay in my house. And that has always, like, been, you know, a real brotherhood. Uh, I, I don't have brothers, like, uh, as real brothers, but for me, he is, you know, my older brother. I've always had, you know, a lot of love for him. And I think that's, that's, that's it, you know. We, what's fun about us is this, just having a great time together and, and really being there for each other. Love that. And you're also half Chilean. Are there any Chilean traditions that you bring into your fighting career and life? Yeah, I mean, I grew up, my grandfather, uh, he was Chilean, and most of my life I grew up with him. So I used to eat a lot of, you know, uh, cazuela, empanadas, uh, all these kinds of Chilean food, pastel de choclo. So, yeah, there's a lot of, of the Chilean culture in my, my raising, and that's why, I, like, I love that my dad is Chilean and I still like whenever I'm with him, we, we've all my life spoke Spanish. Uh, I have family in Chile, so it's a big part of my culture, my family, my heritage. And that's why I always, you know, talk about them. I always remember Chile and, and also represent them. Vicente, right? Well, just one for me uh, outside of the fight. Um, you mentioned to me at the media day ahead of Rafael dos Anjos that Ayrton Senna is a guy that you really look up to. And so I wanted to ask, how does it feel to see a guy like him continuing to inspire people like yourself from just different disciplines 30 years after he passed? Yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's you know, what a legacy is about, is about uh, being able to, regardless of, of, you know, it's timeless. You can, you can influence, you can inspire, you know, young people that have a dream and that, that, that it is possible for you to dream, for you to work hard and for you to be, you know, uh, just, you know, do and what you got to do, you know, in a, in a good manner, uh, be something positive that is going to, you know, add to this world. That's, that's what Art and Senna was for me. You know, he, he showed me a path where I don't got to sell uh, or, you know, give up 
what I believe, give up my principles to achieve what I want to achieve. I just got to work hard and persevere. Presidente. Gracias por tomar tiempo de hablar con la prensa. ¿Cuántos ajustes se tuvieron que hacer cuando cambiaron el nombre y qué impacto tuvo con tu campamento? Eh, al, algunos ajustes, no muchos, porque yo, yo ya pensaba que eso podría pasar. Entonces estaba entrenando no solamente con personas que hacen el juego de Nick, pero también otras personas con otro estilo. Entonces yo estaba preparado para un cambio. Cuando, eh, cuando hubo el cambio, creo que tenía más o menos tres semanas o dos semanas para la pelea. Entonces yo vi mucho video de, la, de, de Temba y hicimos los ajustes. Entrené con las personas que tienen más o menos el, el tamaño y el estilo y todo listo. Muy bien. Y finalmente, cuando un peleador como usted que está rankeado acepta una pelea contra alguien que está tratando de escalar y subir, hay bastante riesgo y no vamos a usar la, la palabra temor, pero muchos peleadores quieren proteger su ranking. ¿Cuál es ese, esa diferencia entre los nuevos y la generación tuya que aceptan cualquier duelo a cualquier hora y con cualquiera, no importando qué número tengas al lado de tu nombre? Yo creo que las más grandes victorias están en el riesgo. Es, así fue toda mi carrera. Mucha, muchas peleas mías eran riesgos y fueron las peleas que más me subieron en el ranking. Entonces, para mí es fácil eh, aceptar una pelea así y me motiva también. De acuerdo, gracias y buena suerte el sábado. Gracias. Presidente, uh, just one quick one. I just wanted to know your reaction to what fans were saying after your loss to Joaquin Buckley, accusing you of quitting and stuff, especially after all of the wars that, that, that you've put on in, in the cage. I mean, uh, fans are fans, you know, some of them are respectful and some aren't. What can we do, you know? Uh, that's why I, I try to just as much as I can show my character so people could see that, hey, sometimes it's nice just to be respectful. And that takes us much further than just trying to talk bad things about others. But, man, that fight, I could say, like, That definitely wasn't the best version of me. There was a lot of things missing. And in certain aspects, yes, I did quit. Why? I could have fought harder. I could have made different decisions. I could have done things different. At that night, I was not ready for it. So props to Buckley. And Buckley was ready. You know, I can't take nothing away from him. And you see what he's doing. I mean, he's, he's having a great run. But that night wasn't me. And that happens, and I don't apologize for it. You know, it's part of developing, you know, and, and we as athletes, we step in here and we go through the risk of losing in front of thousands of people to learn, to get better, to bring you guys entertainment, and that's why I appreciate and I love the fans that love me back. Thank you. Vicente, you're coming up on 10 years in the UFC. Looking back, how crazy is it to look back at 10 years ago and you came into the UFC with a 7-5-1 record. Now you're 22-10-1. How, just how crazy is it looking back on these last 10 years? Man, uh, you know, when, when I, I even feel old, but I'm not old. I'm just 33 years old, so it's amazing. You know, I, I, I was absolutely blessed to get into the UFC at 20, 23 years old. You know, I started fighting MMA at 17 professionally, and I just feel privileged, you know, to have the career I have, to still have years ahead of me, to have a healthy body, uh, you know, so much will to fight, so much room to, de to develop. I just think it's, it's amazing. You know, next year I'll have 10 years in the UFC, and it's a dream come true. You know, I, I couldn't imagine my career would be like this when I was 15, 16, 17, starting, you know, to fight. And it's just, just beautiful. Thank you, guys.